straight from the mountain and into the containers every Cape Tonian now needs. This is really a big... People come from miles away to the spring at Newlands because the water in their taps at home is rationed to 50 litres per person per day. Hard if you have two toddlers. When they ask for things like, can we have a bath, and you want to say no, more often than not. Mm -hmm. So things like that. Um, I think the worry, though, is always with disease outbreak. Mm -hmm. You know, adults can handle it better than kiddies can. But you have to adapt. And it takes about 35 litres can fit on the trolley. That's brilliant. Yes. So you designed that? I designed it myself. So you're selling them now? I'm selling it. Would you like to buy one? <laughs> <laughs> Every night, the queues get longer. Whose responsibility is it to sort this water crisis out, in your view? Uh, I think it's government's job. I think they need better planning mm -hmm. systems in place. And I think that um, they should have predicted this mm -hmm. and then had things already sorted and had things in place already. A few miles away, tourists flock to Cape Town's glitzy waterfront shopping and restaurant centre. But who's going to visit if they can't have a shower because the main water source has dried up? It's not a fantasy apocalypse movie landscape. It's now and it's real. I should be over my head in water because this is the main reservoir supplying Cape Town. And look, it's a desert. It's down to just over 12% of its capacity, lower than last week, and it'll be lower again next week unless it rains. And the last 10% of the water is unusable. So to all intents and purposes, this reservoir is empty. In a normal year, Tierswaterskloof Reservoir provides 41% of Cape Town's water. What you see now is the result of a three year long drought, climate change, has coincided with a massive increase in demand for water, as the city's population has almost doubled in a decade. At the bottom of the farm, we have a small little dam, yeah. and you've got three boreholes that pump into that dam. Okay. The farmers are feeling it. It'll take several years of good rain to refill dams that are essential for irrigation. We're really worried about the long-term future. We really are very worried about it. Fruit farms provide jobs and income, but they use a lot of water. Pears in British supermarkets are full of scarce water from the Western Cape. It's all com controlled with computers. Desmond um, Mudge is changing from micro spray to drip wasteful? irrigation no, to conserve wasteful. water, as the government's cut by 60% the amount farmers can draw from the reservoir at Tierswaterskloof. Of course, there are things we can do but we cannot survive on 40% of our water. We just cannot. And the reason that we are cut like we are is because we are soft targets. We don't go and riot. Uh, we don't go and burn stuff down. But people in poorer communities, they do that very rarely. But the people in the poorer communities are using a very small percentage of the water compared to the richer people and the people on the farms. That is correct. No one argues that point. So I'm not talking about poor people, I'm just talking about People in general make a lot more noise than farmers can. We um, would love to emulate the French farmers who go and block the, their main roads with their tractors, but our tractors are too small. The poor haven't rioted because they've never used much water anyway. The 25% of Cape Town's population who live in shanties and townships use less than 5% of the water. It's people who live first world lifestyles in the wealthy part of the city who are having to change their behavior. The central government, it seems, didn't see this crisis coming. The fact of the matter is that the drought occurred and the drought obviously uh, threw some of the plants out of the window. The impact of climate change is something that also has, has had an effect. The issue of uh, um, 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 uh, population growth as well as urbanization, those two coming together. But all have, those are things you have to plan for. But and you, you didn't. cannot plan for the number of people that will come into any area. You will not know that today you've got 10, you are going to have 100,000 tomorrow. <laughs> The national anthem is meant to bring South Africans together. The central government is responsible for water resources and the province for delivering to people's houses, but each has been blaming the other. 
and united we shall stand. And so the bottom line is that if any sphere of government does not fulfill its function, and for example in this case the national government securing bulk water supply in the dams and other sources, then it's going to be very difficult to clean and distribute water that isn't there. But you have to work together, don't you? Can you do that? Absolutely, we have to work together. I met the minister this week. At last, there is some cooperation. And things... There wasn't before? Well, there was, but the things were very, very slow getting off the mark. Along the coast, they're building one of several planned desalination plants. Some say that's an expensive solution that will damage the environment further. In the short term, using less water is the only way to stop the taps running dry. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea do not plan ahead. But humankind has had a major impact on the Western Cape. As the climate warms, the water crisis here holds many lessons for other parts of the world, where they may be tempted to leave the future to chance. Lindsay Hilson, Channel 4 News, Cape Town.